Well, good morning, Crossroads family. We're excited to have you here for second service. Who's ready to worship? Yeah? All right, well, we're ready to worship along with you. Let's stand to your feet and give God your best praise this morning. Sing it out. I love that song because it reminds us that we can praise him anywhere. It's not just in this building, right? We can praise him at home. We can praise him in our cars. We can praise him at work. We can praise him in times of conflict or in times of joy. We can praise him anywhere, right? And one of the ways that we can also praise him is through communion. Communion is an opportunity when we get to remember what Jesus did for us, that he died on the cross for us so that we could be in right standing with God. And so we're going to continue singing a song, and in a moment we're going to take communion together to remember that sacrifice. But just sing this next song with a heart of gratitude and joy for what he's done for us today. Let's sing.
strong and I witnessed it. You're constant, I witnessed it, and I'm confident. witness it, right? So on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took his disciples together with him and he reminded them that he wouldn't be with them much longer. And he took a piece, a loaf of bread and he thanked God for it and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. So let's eat this in remembrance of the broken body of Jesus Christ. And then he took a cup and he gave thanks for it and he said that this is his blood shed for, him, for them and all of us with the new covenant. So let's drink this in remembrance of the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Jesus, we are grateful for you. We're grateful for the sacrifice that you've made for us, for, this, for the torture that you endured on our behalf so that we could be in right standing with God. And God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you gave us your son for. And God, I just pray that you would be with us here in this room. Help us to feel the gratitude of that moment. But also, God, I, I pray that you would be with us and help us to be unstoppable. We can only be unstoppable with you. It's pointless without you. So God, I just pray that you would help us be an unstoppable church with an unstoppable God. I pray for Pastor Brian and the message. And we thank you and we love you for all that you have done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name, amen. Greet someone on your way down. Hey, good morning. Go ahead and take a seat. Good morning, everyone. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Heather, and this is Ed. Good morning. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. What a full house. What a, a great morning, right, to worship God together. So good. He's a good God. Hey, if you're new, we want to welcome you. We're glad that you're joining us and you're, you're returning. Welcome back. Um, we've got a lot of great things happening today, but we want to help you to stay connected throughout the week. So you can do that by downloading our free Crossroads app. If you don't have that yet, super easy. Uh, scan the QR code on the back of the seat or on the screen online, um, or you can visit crossroadsgrace.org forward slash app. Um, that app is a great tool. It's a resource for you, uh, upcoming events, ministry info, um, and sermon notes, all kinds of things there. So make sure you get that app. Yeah, and if you are new, you've joined us on a very special weekend. You're going to witness just a really cool thing as our church family comes together for our unstoppable commitment weekend. As you came in today, you're on your seat, you would have found a commitment card. Maybe you brought yours with you from home. That's awesome. 
Just want to make sure that you have one of those and you're ready to, as, as a, we as a church come together, ready to commit together. And Pastor Brian's going to talk about that more in a little bit. But this is the culmination of a year of prayer and planning and uh, us as a church going, where do you want to take us, Lord? And, and this is where we're going. And it's just really exciting to see what God's going to do through our family, through this unstoppable initiative. And in fact, as we come to this weekend, Next Gen started last weekend, right, Heather? It sure did, yeah. Our Next Gen have joined us. All of our kids, our middle school, our high school students have joined us on this unstoppable journey together. And last weekend, they got to celebrate their commitments. Um, And actually, our team got to spend some time with them, capturing some of your cute kiddos and your awesome students. So let's watch this video together. My name is Phoebe and I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. And I'm unstoppable. And I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable by giving people money so we can share our love for Jesus. I can help others to know who Jesus is by telling them about him and asking them if they could read the Bible and pray. My name is Abigail and I'm unstoppable. And I'm willing to give $20 because we need to put God first. I want to give because some people don't have clothes or food too, and they really need it. That's why I'm here. I will give away a little bit of toys and money and food and a place to stay. I can help people and be unstoppable by giving them food, cooking for them, or giving them my old clothes or stuff that I don't need. Being unstoppable is showing the good grace of God uh, through your generosity to other people. The campaign Unstoppable to me means giving more of myself and more of my time to God. My unstoppable commitment is to love God. I will take time away from being on my phone and up every morning, even if that means getting up early, to read His Word and better understand it. Waking up early on school days, weekends, and pretty much every day to talk to Him and to worship Him and ending my night with praying to Him. My unstoppable focus is to stay focused in God by serving, um, worshiping, going to church, reading the Bible. My unstoppable commitment is to trust God with my finances and give a little bit more than I'm already doing. Unstoppable means to me is having the ability to do more for my for more for myself, more for others, and more for God. Being unstoppable means to me is to dive into his word at home by myself and get to know him personally and to continue to come to church and give my time with my talents of singing and drumming. I commit to serving in the kids' ministry and wherever I can, also in production. Um, because God gave me talents and I would like to use them to help other people with their journey. My name is Hope and I am unstoppable. I am Sophia and I am unstoppable. I'm Caitlin and I am unstoppable. I am Jenna and I'm unstoppable through Christ. My name is David and I'm unstoppable. My name is Elsie and I am unstoppable. Well, good morning, Crossroads. I'll tell you what, if that didn't inspire you, I don't know what it is. I just love our next gen, which is really this gen, just doing what they do and leading us. So, so grateful for them. Uh, listen, if you're kind of here and you've got a little bit of room next to you, kind of squish in a little bit so we can get some more people in would be awesome. But as you do that, my name is Brian. I'm the lead pastor here. And I'm so grateful that you're with us here today because you are going to be here for the, a massive movement of our church Because this is a weekend, as Pastor Ed has been saying, we've been praying about and fasting about and planning about for well over a year. Commitment weekend is this weekend. Unstoppable journey begins for the next two years. And let me just tell you, if this is like your first time here at Crossroads, you picked an amazing weekend to be here, okay? You are about ready to witness an incredible move of God, but do not feel obligated to do anything today. We want to answer any questions that you have. Just love on you. Be there for you. Uh, I met a a man in the name of Joey after service from South Korea that just moved here, trying to get plugged in. First day here, he's like, I loved it. I just was, so if that's you, we're so excited. We want you to, to meet us at the guest info desk. We'd love to hear more about you. But uh, in fact, 
We've created a series guide, though, for everybody to make sure that we're all on the same page. And so if you've yet to get a series guide with this amazing rhino on the front of it, uh, no shame in the game. Just put your hand in the air. Our team's going to give you one uh, free of charge. We just want to give this to you in your hand. Lots of resources in there. It's actually a discipleship guide as well. You'll notice some pages in the way back that you can be taking notes as I'm preaching here in a moment. Might be a few little nuggets that God is giving you during the message Um, But by way of review, and you can find out more detail in here, I want to tell you the three things that we're running after as a church. The way that we're running after things is first is we're going to reach every one. That means we're going to continue to do what we do here on the Manteca campus and and reach more people for Jesus. But we're going to prepare to launch a multi-campus location when God provides the opportunity and the, the, uh, the, uh, the location for us to do that. Second thing is we're going to unleash our future. We want to reduce, if not eliminate, all the debt that we have currently as a, as a church. And then third and finally, we want, to un, we want to be able to navigate life together, meaning we want to, we're going to open and develop the very first Crossroads Counseling Center right here on the Manteca Antica campus to help the Central Valley uh, with their mental health and those things that are going on even beyond what they even know and what we're, we're prepared. We're going to be ready for them. So we're excited that you're going to be here. We have been preparing for this and ready, but we never want to lose sight of our ultimate goal. And that is that we want to see 100% of people engage in their faith, right? 100% of people engage, increase their dependence and trust in Jesus in all areas of generosity and faith. That's the primary goal. It's the center of the bullseye. And so if we're doing that, if we're trusting Jesus in all areas of our life, he's going to show us a life that is being lived to the full, as he's called us to do. So after the past few weeks, we've been looking at what does it mean to be unstoppable by looking at a few things. We've been looking at, number one, what is an unstoppable God? God is unstoppable. He is an amazing God. He can do all things. And and we ultimately said that God is unstoppable and will provide everything we need to do whatever he has called us to do. Second, we said, what's the unstoppable mission that he's called us to? That's Jesus. Jesus' words, hey, I want you to go and tell the entire world about me. I want the entire globe to know about my love and my grace. And so we said that that mission, the unstoppable mission of Jesus, can never stop. And then we said, based on the mission, based on, on on this amazing God that we have, then we need to be generous towards that because he's called us to have a generous spirit. And we said that unstoppable generosity is only possible when we give God full access to our heart. Not a little bit, but full access to our heart. And then ultimately what happens is called unstoppable transformation. That after we believe in unstoppable God and his mission and we're generous, that he starts to transform us from the inside out to do things, that he'll do something in us to prepare to do through us. And so we said unstoppable transformation happens when we allow Jesus to break down our walls of sin so he can build us back up in him. So those four weeks have set us up really for this week, this unstoppable church week, where we say, what does it mean to be an unstoppable church? Not because of our greatness, because we're all, uh, not all that great, but because of God's greatness. His unstoppable greatness makes an unstoppable church unstoppable. And so this week, we're going to culminate this by having a chance to respond, to commit to this unstoppable mission for the next two years. And again, we just saw our kids and our students already lead out on this, which is so cool. We'll have that video available if you want to see that again. But I love this so much because um, at the end of the service, we're going to continue to see what God is going to do in our lives, in the life of the church. But before we do that, I want us to consider some things in Scripture today. Joshua chapter 6 is where we're going to be at today. So if you have your Bibles or your Crossroads Grace apps, Joshua chapter 6 is where we'll be at. And don't forget online, our chat host is going to be putting a lot of links in there today. So make sure you're available for that. And she's going to put that in there for you right now. Now, a couple of things to pull us up to speed before we get too far. First is, who's Joshua? Who's this dude? Okay, well, Joshua was a former warrior of Moses. Yeah, yeah, that Moses, Moses, like let my people go Moses, that guy, okay? He's a former warrior of his. He took over for Moses when he died and he was told by God constantly, time and time again, Joshua, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. And the people of God, the Israelites, they love Joshua. But it was a big task to take over for Moses. That's a kind of a big deal. You know, I understand a little bit about what Joshua went through when I took over for Pastor Mike, the one that founded Crossroads. Now, Mike ain't Moses. He might be as old as Moses, but he ain't Moses. You know what I'm saying? Sorry, Mike, I love you. That's too easy, okay? But, but you know, it's a big deal. But, but, uh, M- but Joshua, his charge, he was in charge of leading the people to the promised land. The promised land is what God had promised them once they were out of Egypt that he was going to give them this land But what's taken place so far is Joshua has officially taken over for Moses, taken the reins, the whole nine yards, 
And the first thing that Joshua does is he sends out spies into the promised land, specifically to a city called Jericho to find out what was going on. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about Jericho here in a second. But Joshua leads the people across the Jordan River at flood stage. It's a big deal. He, he parts the, the, the Jordan River so that people can walk across as they get closer and closer to the promised land. But keep this in mind. The promised land was not just going to be handed over to them. Right? It wasn't like they're just going to be like, oh, here you go. Have all our land. No, no. They're going to have to fight for it. And they are going to have to put effort into it. And it's ultimately going to mean that they would have to have faith in what God was calling them to do. Which is why I want you to remember this. I think it's really, really important to consider this, that often God's blessing will require faith-filled effort to receive it. Often God's blessing will require faith-filled effort to receive it. We see that throughout the Bible. Let's go back into, the, into Egypt when the people of God were in captivity there. They had to have faith that Moses was, was going to do what he said he was going to do through God. They had to have faith during all those crazy plagues that were taking place that God was going to provide for them and keep them safe. I had to have faith that once they swung open those gates of Egypt and said, get out of here, that God was going to provide for them. Once they were in the wilderness, they had to have faith that God was going to lead them with this pillar of fire and with the, the smoke. And even later on, we see with Elijah, the prophet Elijah had to trust that God, when God said, hey, when you're battling these two, this, this prophet of Baal, this fake God, and, and, and we're going to show that God's the real God, that here's what I want you to do on my altar. I want you to fill it with water, so much water it overflows that there's no way it could start on fire and I'm going to start it on fire. Elijah had to have trust. He just filled it up, filled it up, filled it up. God laid it on fire. He had to believe though. Abraham had to have faith that when he, God says, I need you to actually sacrifice your one and only son, Isaac, uh, up on this mountain, that when he took him up on the mountain, he put him on the altar, he had to have faith that God was gonna provide. And right before he kills his son, God says, stop. And he provides a ram to replace uh, the, the sacrifice of Isaac. He had to have faith in order to do that. On and on and on, it goes in the Bible. God's blessing requires faith-filled effort to receive it. And the same is true with Joshua. It's because as they begin to march towards this promised land that God had told them about, there was going to be all kinds of faith-filled effort that was going to be required by the people. The first of which now stands in front of them, this city of Jericho. See, the people of God, um, as they had, had left, they now are camping on the outside of Jericho. This place called Gilga, it's an open plain area there, there in, in Gilga, right outside of Jericho. And, and now in front of them is the first obstacle, the first faith test, in order for them to receive the promised land. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1, we see it, see it says this. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Now let's talk about Jericho for a second. Uh, last week we talked about the city. It's the city that Jesus walked through on his way to Jerusalem. And it was there that he met, you remember Zacchaeus, the wee little man that climbed the tree and I climbed the ladder and y'all freaked out and were more worried about me up there than what God was saying. It's okay, right? But, but there was Zacchaeus, his wee little man. He had this unstoppable transformation that occurred in his life when Jesus changed his heart and he decided he, want, he wanted more of the things of God than the greed of this world. So this is the Jericho that we're talking about, but we're talking about OG Jericho, Old Testament Jericho version of it. And it wasn't that big of a city, actually. It's about eight acres of land. Uh, it had these walls that were 15 feet high, about double the size of that. And you're thinking, ah, oh, that ain't a big a deal. But back then, that's a big deal. 15 foot tall walls, that's pretty big. And the spies that Joshua sent out into Jericho, they actually sent back and said, hey, this place is highly fortified, the Bible would say. And they knew that was true because they went inside of Jericho and the king of Jericho wanted to kill them because obviously if they're spies, he wants to get rid of them. But they were saved by a prostitute whose name was Rahab. And she helped these men get up and over these 15-foot walls to go back to Joshua to tell them everything that they knew. But I want you to notice something really important that we just read. And it might have slipped by you if you're not careful. It says that the city was fortified because of the Israelites. Because of the Israelites. And, and we know that that's true, not because we're guessing, but because of what Rahab, that prostitute that saved those people, that, that she said about the Israelites to the spies. In chapter two, it says, I know that the Lord has given you this land. This is Rahab speaking. And that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country, listen to this, are melting in fear because of you. 
We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Sion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, who completely de- whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage failed because of you, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. So Jericho knew that the Israelites were coming. Like they knew. And Jericho knew that their God, the Israelites' God, was powerful and could do anything. And then listen to what God says in verse 2 of chapter 6. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I, God, have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. It's kind of, a, kind of a, like, a, like a giving the story away, kind of deal breaker on that. Like, okay, well, let's pray and go home. We know it ends. But, but, what, but let's really think about what this means. The people in Jericho knew God was unstoppable. Rahab the spy knew that God was unstoppable. The spies knew that God was unstoppable. Joshua knew that God was unstoppable. And God just told them, I'm unstoppable. The only thing that stood between the Israelites and the victory God said they would get was what? The people. It was the faith of the people to believe that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. And, and I'm not sure if you need a reminder on this, but the, the, the meta-narrative of the Bible, we already know how that ends too. And here's, here's how it ends. Jesus wins, Satan loses, eternity is real, grace is real for everybody that believes in him, right? It's, that's a fact. That's how it ends, you guys. But what lies between that truth and us believing it is us. It's our faith. And what, what stands between us believing in our unstoppable goals and those being accomplished and being met is, is us. It's, it's our faith. Just like the people of God looking at the walls of Jericho in front of them is this unstoppable moment for us. Which is why before the Israelites could receive the victory that God was going to give them, he gave them an opportunity to, to flex their faith and to trust that God was going to do what he said he was going to do, exactly how he was going to do it. Verse three, let's read that. It says, March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days, having seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in the front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So this is God speaking again. And God says to Joshua, hey, here's the plan. Uh, Kind of sounds kind of like a prescription from a doctor a little bit. You know, God's like, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take uh, some armed men. I want you to have the priests. Give them some ram's horns. That'll make it cooler. Uh, And then I want you to have the Ark of the Covenant in the back, maybe some more warriors in the back. Uh, Do this for about six days. On the seventh day, let me know how it's going. And then we'll kind of see what we do. Right? Kind of sounds like that a little bit, doesn't it? But could you just for a second, okay? So, so, so God told Joshua, who in turn would tell the people, could you imagine the eye rolls that Joshua got when he told the people this? Yeah, here's the plan, guys. I mean, the people had to be thinking, okay, 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 okay. God, okay, seriously, man, all right? We have already crossed two major bodies of water here. We've been wandering the desert for like 40 years, bro. We're eating manna and quail every day. By the way, that ended a couple of days ago, but we'll complain about that later. Don't worry. Uh, and now you want us to do ring around the rosy of this, of this like, Jericho? Like, God, please, come on. God, for once, would you just knock down the wall so we could get this whole promise thing? Right. Just come on, God. And I'm just guessing that there might be a lot of people that might be thinking the same thing about this unstoppable thing. Hey, hey, God, uh, not sure if you knew. Economy, not great right now world, little tense, political, that's a hot mess. Let's not even go there, right? So maybe we just skip the faith part. You just do all this stuff without us. How about that? What do you think, God? (laughs) Now, maybe you feel that way right now, but I need to tell you something. It never works that way, ever, ever. Remember what we said, often God's blessing will require faith-filled effort in order to receive it. Which, which is why Joshua, instead of like saying all the things that we're thinking, he just says, all right, God, I'm going to do it. 
And he begins this Jericho plan that he laid out by God. And he goes to the people and he goes to his leaders. He says, here's what's going to happen. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we invited everybody at Crossroads, anyone at Crossroads that said, hey, I'm going to lead out. I want to be part of this whole adventure, this, uh, this unstoppable journey. I'm, I'm ready to go. And we call it the Advanced Commitment Night. Special worship service. It was so much fun. And I just want you to see and I want you to hear the hearts of those that let out to inspire each and every one of us for today. Take a listen. There's always a dominant rhino that is the leader of the crash. And I am so glad that the leader of this crash is Jesus. Because this means we get to follow behind the creator of the universe for wherever he has for us and wherever he goes. My friends, the beginning of Unstoppable starts tonight. My unstoppable commitment means that God is always faithful. He, I have seen him work in small things and big things. And this is a really big thing, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. Me too. Amen. <laughs> our unstoppable commitment is, it's a deeper trust. It's our reliance on God to recognize that um, our part will just be part of the greater whole because it's his church. And we're participating, we're called. And it is absolutely unstoppable because he's behind it. My unstoppable commitment means faithfully giving back a portion of what God has given to me to support um, the growth of this church and other things that I believe in. My unstoppable commitment means to use the gifts that God has given me to be able to bring people closer to God and make them unstoppable for Him. My unstoppable commitment means being a team. I came here as a person who was dry boned and I know that this is a place that was unstoppable for me to grow in my faith and to grow my community. And I'm excited about the commitment that our church is facing up ahead and we are unstoppable. Uh, the commitment to Thank us you. is the next generation um, of young Christians that um, have a, a love and, and a desire to serve Christ as we have all these years. Uh, we look forward to uh, see how amazing uh, things that, that Christ will, will do in this church. Our software commitment means reaching more people, meeting them where they are in life, mm -hmm. and hopes that they will find in Jesus what we found in Him. Yeah, and God is unstoppable. We've been through some previous campaigns before, and just to see God work through them, and see the end result as you fast forward is always so amazing. Uh, for me, the church taking another step to reach even more people is really important. And I am so glad to be part of Unstoppable. Yeah, I've been unemployed for about five months now. Um, so our commitment is really uh, a step of faith in God that um, he'll provide with what we've decided to give. I think what Unstoppable means to us is just Continually moving forward and seeing the way our church has moved is so valuable to us. I'm most excited for the Counseling Center because I could see the needs that it would fill and I know how much of an impact that could make in our community. And stop over means to me to give my heart to the Lord and encouraging others to do the same. And I'm going for it and do what all I can. In Jesus Christ's name, God bless. Our unstoppable means that loving Jesus and, and getting to get this community together to follow Jesus and to spread his word all over Manteca. And with Christ, we're unstoppable. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Yeah, I just want to thank those over 40 families that have already stepped forward to be able to say we're in. So great. Uh, and now, church, it's, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's our turn to join the rest of them, 100% of us making a commitment to be able to increase our love and our affection towards Jesus through our generosity and our faith. Because what we know is that this is true. We know this is true, that faith-filled people lead by showing through their actions that, God, with, that with God anything is possible. That's through our actions, through faith-filled people and our actions. 
And, and this is what we see as the people are, are given this word from the Lord from, from, from Joshua about Jericho. And, and so this is what happens after Joshua. He, he sets out the vision for the people. He says, this is what God wants to do. And then in verse 8, we get to read where it says, When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time, the trumpets were sounding. But Joshua had commanded the army, Do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voice. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling at once. Then the army returned to the camp and spent the night there. So these, these people seem to go on this crazy walkabout around the city, and, and there's trumpet music behind them and this whole deal. Now, let me tell you a little bit about it, though. There was over 2 million Israelites at the time, 2 million people. About 600,000 of them would have been fighting men. So not all of them would have marched around the city each day. I mean, could you imagine how long it would take for two million people to march around an eight-acre property? I mean, guys, I have a hard time getting two French bulldogs to walk from the mailbox back to the house, okay? Let alone two million people to walk around eight acres, and did you catch it? Not to talk? Not a chance, right? Plus, what kind of, like, like liability would it be for two million people to be walking around with the elevated position of the enemies? And, oh, it'd be terrible, so, so why is that important? Here's why it's important. Since not everyone was going to be walking around the city every day, it meant that there would have been lots and lots of people sitting back at that camp at Gilga, just watching things take place. Sitting there and watching these warriors and these priests and walking around the city over and over and over again. And you know what? I'm sure there was a lot of people in that, that camp at Gilga thinking, oh, seriously, is this really going to work? Like, this is our best idea. I mean, I like Joshua. Like, you're good and all, but you've officially lost it, dude. Moses, you were wacky. Joshua, you're like, cuckoo. Like, you're out of your mind. Now, why, why would they say that? Be because the plan God had to, for them to take over Jericho was crazy. This was a fortified city, right? Hey, God, Let's use a little force, you know. This isn't time to get your 10,000 steps in for the day so your Apple Watch is like, way to go. No. But yeah, they were, but there they were, watching their leaders every day, walking behind that wall. And you know what? There's probably a couple moments where they couldn't see them. And they're wondering, like, oh, how's this going to work? What's going to happen? But day after day, they would watch. Verse 12 it says, Joshua got up early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. Day after day, people watching them go around the city wondering, is this gonna work? What is gonna happen day after day? And they're just saying like, okay, God, what, what, what's going to happen here? And, and today is the day that we, as an unstoppable church, believing in an unstoppable God, we start walking around our walls of Jericho, our goals that God has put in front of us, and we start to believe and trust in a God that says he's going to do what he said he's going to do. And, and listen, people from the outside looking in, uh, they're going to be watching you. They're going to be watching me. They're going to watch all of us. They're going to be watching us as we walk around this wall and they're going to see if our hands are shaking. They're going to see us walk around this wall and see if we get a little bit nervous. They're going to see us walk around these walls and the things that are in front of us. And they're going to ask, like, are they going to stumble? Are they going to walk away when it gets tough or when it gets a little difficult? Or do we just keep walking and we just keep trusting because we know that the victory is up ahead? Because what do we know? We know day seven is coming, you guys. The day seven is coming. Man, man, look at verse 15. Here comes the good stuff, right? Verse 15 says, On the seventh day they got up at daybreak, marched around the city seven times in the same manner, except on that day they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted, and the sound of the trumpet 
in the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. So on the seventh day, I envision this taking place. They're rubbing the sleep out of their eyes. They're getting up. They're getting ready. All right, man, set day seven. Let's go. High-fiving all around. We got this right. Doing the same thing God has told us to do. And then what do they do? They start circling that city the same way that they had done before. All the other six days, they circled around. They would do one lap, and that was it. But this is day seven, and their trip was seven times longer. This time, God says, I want you to circle that sucker seven times. I want you to create a a hurricane of faith around that city. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the seventh and the final trip around, they, they blew the trumpets. They screamed as loud as they could at the top of their lungs. And as they shouted, as if all the, all the faith of all the people rattled the gates of heaven. And then God looked down with a little flick of his finger. He, he knocks the walls down and they come crashing down. And immediately, did you see what happened after? Immediately it said, it said that everyone took the city. Right, they all got to go. They got to experience the victory of God and to see that the promises that he said were true. That what God says will happen will happen in his timing. And as the people stood on the rubble of God's promises, they could see it. They could literally see the goodness of God right in front of them. And, and as we see this, play, this scene play out in front of us, my friends, I believe the very same thing can happen here. I believe that God is going to move. Why? Because walls will fall through the faith of us all. It's about us all. It's about us working together. It's about us shouting as loud as we can, trusting God that we echo in the heaven. You know what happens? Walls fall down when we trust God with everything that we got. Crossroads, I want us to be part of something special in the life of this church that I believe that we could crash together and we can be an unstoppable church. And as I said in that advanced commitment night, how beautiful it is that this crash of rhinos that we call the church is led by none other than Jesus Christ. It ain't you, it ain't me, it's Jesus. And that means that we get to follow behind the creator of the universe for whatever he wants for us. And just like the walls of Jericho, it is the power of God that will make those walls fall. It is by his strength that we will be able to walk through the beautiful rubble of the promises that he has told us about. Because as we've said from the very beginning of this series, what Job's words about God in Job 42.2, they are true today. He says, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. In fact, I want us to say that loud and proud today, standing on the rubble of God's promises. Would you say that with me? One, two, three. I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. We got to do better. 10 a.m. Unstoppable Church. Say it with me loud. Here we go. I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. Oh, if we believe that church, what would happen? And what this all means is that as a church, We are poised to crash through whatever God has called us to do. Why? Because we are an unstoppable church. And an unstoppable church will stop at nothing so that more people can hear about Jesus. That is what the church is all about. So Crossroads, let's be that type of church. Let's be unstoppable for Jesus. And let's just see, let's just crazy, crazy see what happens when we all come together and we shout as much as we can to him through our generosity and our faith to see what happens when we win more people for Jesus in the Central Valley and beyond. And see, when that happens, Paul's words in Ephesians chapter 3 start to jump off the page because I think over the past five weeks he's been doing something in us to prepare to do something through us, as Paul would say. He says this in Ephesians, he says... Now to him, Jesus, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is in work within us, to him be the glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. It is all about Jesus, y'all. It's all about Jesus working in us so he could do something through us. It's all that matters. And when our trust in him starts to boil to the surface, we respond in faith. And that is what today is all about. It's about 100% of us increasing our dependence and our trust in Jesus through our generosity and our faith. It's about making a crash for Jesus. 
It's about believing in an unstoppable God working through an unstoppable church, guys. That's what it's all about. So the time has come for us to really put our, our faith where we, what God is doing in us is at. And now what I want us to do right now is I want us to pray and I want us to consider our unstoppable commitment. This is the time that we've been waiting for. So I want you to pull up that card that you've got on the seat, maybe that you brought with you. I want you to put some hands on it. I want you to grab it. Now listen, if you're joining us online, a QR code's gonna pop up. You can be a part of this unstoppable commitment moment right now. Or we'll also be putting a link in there. If you wanna mail it in, 1200, PO Box 1200 right here in Manteca. We'll be giving that to you in a second. But as you look at this card, I want you to remember a few things. Here's the first thing I want you to remember. What you do today matters. It matters for you as a family, matters for you as an individual. It matters because you're taking a huge step in your faith, in, in, your, in your commitment. But it also matters, please listen, that it matters because you are gonna be a part of changing the eternities of people in the Central Valley and beyond, okay? You are gonna help people discover Jesus and follow him fully. I want you to know that what you do today matters. I also want you to know that what you're gonna be putting on here matters because it's gonna reflect your total giving to Crossroads, okay? So if you're somebody that already gives to Crossroads, I want you to include what you already are giving in that number, okay? Include your two-year regular giving number in that number. Then next to it is what you would add on your expanded giving over the next couple of years. Then underneath there is a place for stored resources, things that you have at your house or whatever that you want to just sell and make a part of being a crash to this. Sell the, and then that becomes part of your total giving. It's not your extra, it's your total giving. Everything counts together. It's all unstoppable. Now for some of you, this might be the very first time you've ever given a Crossroads ever. And I am so over the top pumped for you right now because listen, this, God's smiling on you saying, I, I, I'm so proud of you for being for trusting and being generous because you are stepping out in faith and you are trusting him in this amazing mission that he's called you to. I love that. I'm so proud of you. For others of you, you might be choosing to give it away. You've never, ever been generous like this in your life. It may be bigger than you've never done before. Maybe you've been a Christian for a little while, but God's been working in you these past five weeks. He's challenging you to step out and do something through you. Man, I am pumped for you. Because it might be the biggest commitment you've ever made, but it's demonstrating that you flexing your faith muscles in a whole new way. I'm proud of you. And then there's some of us that have been Christians for a whole long time. And you know what we're doing? We're chomping at the bit to be a part of this. Because we know, we've seen God's goodness in our life time and time again. So we are, man, I'm in. Whatever you're doing, I want to be a part of it. My family, man, we're with you in that. We prayed for it. We're trusting God to do something special in the life of our church and in our family. But finally, I want you to know that this card that you have, you don't have to fill in all the blanks. The most important part is this bottom number, okay? This bottom number along with your commitment, along with your, your contact information down there. This is what we wanna make sure. You can use this as a worksheet if you want, but at the bottom, this is what. This is your commitment of your total generosity towards the Unstoppable campaign in, the, in, the, in, the, in Crossroads for the next two years. It's bottom part right there. But I want you to hear me loud and clear on something. We're in this together. The strength of all God's people shouting is what makes a faith-filled noise that reaches the heavens. God is preparing to do something amazing here. But never forget, walls will fall through the faith of us all. It's all of us. So here's what's gonna happen. Ryan's gonna come out here in a second. He's gonna play some, some music underneath us as you prepare your card. Now, some of you, you might have already come, you came, your, your varsity level, you already know what you're gonna do and you've got your card filled out. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the time. I want you to pray about it. I want you to just ask God to give you the faith to be able to fulfill that commitment over the next few years. I want you to consider your final number, whatever it might be. I want you to take some time to surrender your heart to him, to stand in the rubble of his goodness and to know that he's, he's, gonna, be good. he's gonna see you through. He wants to see your heart of integrity, so pray for that. There's other of you that you know what you're gonna commit, but you just haven't like written it down yet. Maybe you're nervous to write it down. Maybe some of you are like, if I write it down, that's gonna be real. I wanna encourage you to lean into God. Ask him for courage. Prepare this card boldly and confidently. Know that God will be with you and he is for you. He's gonna give you the faith to fulfill whatever commitment that you make. I just know it. So here's what I want you to do. Take this time. I want you to pray. I want you to write down 
Feel free to talk quietly with your spouse or pray if you need to, take some time with God. But I want you to stay seated during this time. In, in a minute, I'll come back up and tell you what we're gonna do next. But right now, just stay seated. Spend a little time in prayer as you think about what you're gonna do with your unstoppable commitment. As you do that, never forget that you can stand on the promises of God time and time again. He will be with you. It's through the faith of us all that walls will fall. Take some time. We've had our time to, to pray, <clears throat> to think. These past five weeks have been amazing, talking about an unstoppable God, his unstoppable mission, unstoppable generosity, unstoppable transformation, all being done through an unstoppable church. So now it's time for us to be able to make those moments, make those commitments that we've been praying and talking about. <clears throat> In front of me, you'll notice that there's four stations. There'll be four boxes up here that you can simply put your card in. I love for your family, your, you, you and your spouse, whatever you'd like to do, come up and and put that in together as an act of unity and solidarity. But there's another important thing that I want you to do. And as we come up here, you're going to notice that there's some canvases up here with our crash logo in the bottom of it. And there's some markers up here. And this is honestly one of the most important things I want you to do is because this is going to be a chance for you to write the name of your one on. I want you to write the name of that one person that you're praying for, you're trying to connect with, to lead them to Jesus so they can know who he is, to discover Jesus, follow him, and and then lead somebody to do the very same thing. I want you to take time just to write that name. It might take a second, it's okay. Write the first name of that person on here. We wanna protect their anonymity. And so just write the first name of that person on here. There's plenty of canvases up there, but please just take the time to do that as a remembrance of why we're doing this. It's for people to know who Christ is and I want you to write your one on there. So again, you'll come forward. We're gonna worship in a second. You'll put your card in. You'll write the name of that one down. Then you'll return to your seat in just a moment and we'll close again. And again, if you're part of the Advanced Commitment Night, we want you to come forward and, and, and to put a card in as well because we want you to be a part of this moment in, at Crossroads. 
So I'm gonna pray in a second. When I get done, we're gonna, we're gonna stand, we're gonna worship, and then at any point you can come forward, you and your family, put your commitment cards in, write the name of your one down, return to your seat, and then I'll close this out in prayer when we finish. But right now, let's pray for that unstoppable God to move. Father God, we love you. I pray right now that you would do something in this place, whether online or in person. God, that walls would fall by the faith of us all. Father, may the walls of Jericho that stand in front of us be preparing to fall because of the shout and the faith of all of us in this room. God, we are grateful that you are allowing us to be a small part of your bigger plan. We pray, Father, that you would you would amplify and you would multiply and you would, you would just take these, these commitments and do more than we could ever think or imagine, Father. And we just pray, God, that we could humbly say one day when we come to heaven to be able to say, I was part of an unstoppable movement and there's so many people around me that are here because of it. Thank you for letting us be this small part of what you've generously given us, God. So God, it's a time where we simply say collectively, you're unstoppable and we believe it and we wanna be unstoppable with you as a church. We give this to you, Father. We love you. We thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Stand to your feet. Church, it's time to be an unstoppable church following an unstoppable God. Here we go.
Let's give it up for God today. I have no idea how I'm going to get through another service, but man, oh man, God moved. Oh, God moved. Yeah. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of what God is going to do. It's unstoppable God through an unstoppable church. And I know he's going to bless you. I know that he was going to do something in you so he can do something through you. And together we are going to storm the gates of hell to be able to win more people for Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we stand in the rubble of your blessing. We stand on the promises that you are good and that you are true. Father, would you do a work in us? Would you allow us to see you move in a way that we possibly could never even think or imagine? And may we stand back and say, it's all you. It's all for you, Jesus. It's not about a person. It's about a savior. It's about you, Jesus Christ, and all that we do. And so, Father, as we walk out of here, heads held high, excited about what the future holds, would you, would you bless us? Would you allow us to see your goodness? And may we trust that your way is the best way and that through all things, you are moving. We are grateful to be a small part of your bigger plan. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. And all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Tag your it.